Take a look at this video obtained by the BBC. That's a Russian-launched missile hitting an international airport in the southwestern city of Ivano-Frankivsk. Russian tanks crossed into Ukraine in both the north and south, rolling right through the second largest city in Ukraine, Kharkiv. Meanwhile, the West is slapping a second set of sanctions on Russia and its elites, and U.S. President Joe Biden says NATO is resolute in its commitment to Article 5. The United States will defend every inch of NATO territory with the full force of American power. NATO is more united and more determined than ever. There is no doubt, no doubt that the United States and every NATO ally will meet our Article 5 commitments, which says that an attack on one is an attack on all. Romeo Dallaire is a retired Canadian Lieutenant General. He served as Force Commander of the UN Peacekeeping Mission in Rwanda, of course, during the 1994 genocide. He joins me now. Hi, General Dallaire. Good to see you. Thank you very much for making the time. I'm sorry, I don't think I can hear you. Let me just check. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no <laughs> problem. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for unmuting yourself, sir. Uh, uh, I do appreciate it. Uh, let me just start off by asking you, uh, I think what a lot of Canadians are, are, are you know, sitting, sitting and watching on TV right now, and they have been the last 24 hours, uh, an alarming offensive taking place in Ukraine. As you watch that take place and unfold, what is going through your mind? What is going through my mind is, first of all, uh, some extended similarities with what I lived in 94, where, in fact, uh, we, we moved in a very rapid way into uh, a civil war and a genocide and that uh, nobody came uh, and uh, a million were killed. And so uh, I'm looking at uh, the, now what happened in the Crimea. Uh, I'm looking at the, the two uh, states that had the rebel forces in them. Uh, and now I see a deliberate and, and, and concerted uh, offensive operation by a powerful uh, nation into a neighbor. And I am not convinced that uh, they'll stop until they cover the full country. Uh, then, uh, yes, uh, there will be impacts uh, on the economics and so on of Russia, uh, but uh, will Ukraine essentially fall under Russian control uh, and the Ukrainian people too? And how many casualties will that entail? That's yet to be seen. We A little bit earlier on the program, we spoke to Bob Ray, the ambassador to the UN, and, and he was saying some people uh, might have been surprised at the scale of the offensive. Were you at all surprised at what Putin did over the last day? Not in, in the sense uh, that that was sort of part of a, a phased assessment of what he would do. Uh, would he really want to simply take over those rebel areas uh, or those provinces? Or if he's in uh, and the reactions that are coming from the international community are reactions that you've been hearing, uh, what really uh, can stop him except the Ukrainian people and to what extent are their forces able to do that and to what extent are people both Ukrainian and Russians prepared to take casualties uh, in ultimately bringing uh, the whole of Ukraine under their control. Yeah, I was hoping to get your insight on on what might stop Putin just because so much of the conversation in this part of the world is around this, this allied effort to put sanctions on Russia and, and how that unfolds. How much do you see that being part of the solution and, and how much of a military solution will be needed? The, ec the economic the dimensions are of, of enormous significance. I'm not negating that. Uh, we don't know what the reserves are in, in Russia really to sustain that, except uh, what uh, the Rus Russian people will be able to sustain. To what extent are they prepared uh, to take casualties and also uh, to live under uh, the restrictions of the economics. Uh, that is a test of the, the power, and it must have been part of the assessment that Putin and his team have looked at uh, in making this decision. Uh, in regards to uh, the uh, follow-on uh, of, in fact, uh, let's say, them taking over all of Ukraine, 
Um, do we see another, uh, well, another sort of Cold War mm -hmm. scenario uh, that we thought was uh, was no more? We, uh, I remember George Bush saying right after the Cold War, saying we entered a new world disorder. And it was true. Europe was relatively safe. Yeah, we had Yugoslavia imploding and other nations. Uh, but now our six o'clock is not safe. Now uh, there is an example in Europe uh, of uh, a nation potentially taking over another nation. And if they succeed, what is that example going to be for so many other countries that might have uh, desires to rectify borders of the past, uh, and let alone uh, simply want to increase their cap capabilities? Are you convinced that countries like Canada and the United States, countries in the e EU, are seized with what you just, just laid out? Do you think that they are adequately uh, acting on the idea that if Putin wins, the, the ramifications of that worldwide could be enormous? That, that is the essence of uh, the concerns that we all have, isn't it? I mean, we've just gone through a, a pandemic and people are already still trying to, to sort out how the impact of that has been, that battle. And, and then we see this insecurity now in Europe that's, that's come upon us, to which we are not sure what the extent ultimately will be in this sort of now post-Cold War uh, era. Uh, and in so doing, uh, are there now limits uh, that people... Uh, will no more observe in the international community in regards to sovereignty. And if that's the case, uh, to how many other of humanity, to which we can now Skype nearly everybody, so we're getting it in real time, uh, how much more can we uh, absorb of the suffering and the destruction of humanity uh, for ambitions uh, of nations that are led by individuals who feel that they can, in fact, abuse all the, the, the criteria and all the parameters that we've been working on uh, to establish a peace that is lasting for humanity. Do you think, General Dallaire, that Putin could be successful? It militarily depends on how much they are prepared to take as casualties and 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 uh, that is both on the ukrainian side as well as on as on the russian side that's the military side uh, because they've he's got enough to sustain uh, this conflict uh, however uh, just like if you remember the russians in afghanistan uh, the people of russia uh, forced uh, the the government to pull out of Afghanistan because the casualties were so enormous. Uh, and so a big part of this exercise is going to be in the hands of the Russian people and to what extent they will uh, accept not only casualties, but the hardships that now they will be living with uh, due to all the parameters that are available and seem to be being put into place by the international community against Russia. Okay, General Dallaire, I'll leave it there. Appreciate your insights as always. Thank you. You've been very kind. Good luck. You as well. Retired Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire. We Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.